the Idris Shah Foundation podcast. Practical psychology for today. Featuring the works of Idris Shah, narrated by David Ott. Welcome to the Idris Shah Foundation podcast. In this edition of the podcast, we will hear selections from The Secret Law of Magic by Idris Shah. This audio is made available by the Idris Shah Foundation. Chapter 6. The Magical Uses of Certain Herbs. The Secrets of Albertus Magnus. The First Book of the Virtues of Herbs. Magic Not Unlawful Aristotle, the prince of philosophers, saith in many places that every science is of the kind of good things. But notwithstanding, the operation sometimes is good and sometime evil, as the science is changed unto a good or to an evil end, to that which it maketh. Of the which saying, two things are concluded. The first is that the science of magic is not evil, for by the knowledge of it evil may be eschewed, and good by means thereof may be followed. The second thing is also concluded, for so much as the effect is so praised and so happily esteemed for the end, and also the end of science is dispraised, when it is not ordained to good or to virtue. It followeth then that every science or faculty, as operation, is sometime good and sometime evil. Therefore, because the science of magic is a good knowledge, as it is presupposed, and is somewhat evil in beholding of causes and natural things, as I have considered and perceived in very many ancient authors, yea, and Albert myself have found out the truth in many things, and I suppose or imagine the truth to be in some part of the book of Kiranda, and also the book of Alcarac. First, therefore, I will declare of certain herbs, secondly of certain stones, and the virtues of them. Powers of the Sixteen Magical Plants The sixteen magical plants given by Albertus, with his version of their Latin and English names, are as follows. 1. Eleotropia, marigold. 2. Urtica, nettle. 3. Virga pastoris, wild teasel. 4. Celidonia, celandine. 5. Provinca, periwinkle. 6. Mapita, Calamint, Penny Royal. 7. Lingua Carnis, Hound's Tongue. 8. Jusquianus, Henbane. 9. Lilium, Lily. 10. Usicus Quirky, or Mistletoe. 11. Centauris, Centauri, probably Centauria rather than Centauri, Erythria. 12. Salvia, sage. 13. Verbena, vervain. 14. Melisophilus, smallage. 15. Rosa, rose. 16. Serpentina, snake's grass, probably snakeweed. All these forenamed herbs shalt thou find in their several places, with their wonderful operation and markings, but yet if thou dost not observe the times and seasons wherein there should be ministered and put in practice, all thy labour is of none effect. This paragraph appears only in the edition of 1617 and does not figure in the Book of Secrets of 1525 or 1565. 1. The first herb is called with the men of Chaldea, Elios with the Greeks matuchiol, with the Latins eleotropium, with Englishmen marigold, whose interpretation is of elion, that is, the sun, and tropos, that is, alteration or change, because it is turned according to the sun. 
The virtue of this herb is marvellous, for if it be gathered, the sun being in the sign Leo in August, and wrapped in the leaf of a laurel or may tree, and a wolf's tooth added thereto, no man shall be able to have one word to speak against the bearer thereof, but words of peace. If anything be stolen, and the bearer of the things before named, lay them under his head in the night, he shall see the thief and all his conditions. The Marigold in a Process to Discover Immorality 1. Moreover, if the aforesaid herb be put in any church, where women be, which have broken matrimony on their part, they shall never be able to go forth of the church, except it be put away. And this last point hath been proved, and is very true. 2. The second herb is named of the Calde Roebra, of the Greeks Olieribos, of the Latins and Frenchmen Urtica, of Englishmen a nettle. Nettle and yarrow as a charm to allay all fear. 2. He that holdeth this herb in his hand, with an herb called milfoil, or yarrow, or nosebleed, is sure from all fear and fantasy or vision. Method of attracting fishes. 3. And if it be put with the juice of house leek, and the bearers had been anointed with it, and the residue put in water, if he enter the water where fishes are, they will gather together in his hands, adding thereto ad piscalum. And if his hand be drawn forth, they will leap again to their own places, where they were before. Of an experiment with wild teasel. 3. The third herb is named of the Chaldees Loromboror, of the Greeks Alamor, of the Latins Virga Pastoris, of the Englishmen Wild Teasel. 4. Take this herb and temper it with the juice of mandrake, and give it to a bird, or to any other beast. And it shall be great with a young one in the own kind, and shall bring forth the birth in the own kind of the which young one. Of creating discord through the same herb. 5. If the gum tooth be taken and dipped in the meat or drink, every one that shall drink thereof shall begin a non battle, and when they would put it away, give to him the juice of valerian, and peace shall be among them as before. Of a talisman for victory. 4. The fourth herb is named Aquilaris of the Chaldees. It springeth in the time in which the eagles build their nests. It is named by the Greeks Valius, of the Latins Celadonia, and of the Englishmen Celandine. This herb springeth in the time which swallows and also the eagles make their nests. 6. If any man shall have this herb with the heart of a mole, he shall overcome all his enemies, and all matters in suit, and shall put away all debate. To know if a sick man will die or not. 7. And if the before-named herb be put upon the head of a sick man, if he shall die he shall sing with a loud voice, if not he shall weep. Of the fifth herb and a love charm. 5. 8. The fifth herb named of the Chaldea is Iterisi, of the Greeks Vorax, of the Latins Provinca or Provinca, of Englishmen Periwinkle, when it is beaten into powder with worms of the earth wrapped about it, and with an herb called Semperuina, in English house leek, it induceth love between man and wife if it be used in their meats. Other uses of this herb. 9. And if it shall be put in the mouth of the beast called the bugle, he shall break any one in the midst. And this was proved of late time. If the said confection be put in the fire, 
it shall be turned anon into blue colour. Experiment with the sixth herb. 6. The sixth herb is named of the Chaldees Bleath, of the Greeks Ketus, of the Latins Mepeta, of Englishmen Calment, otherwise Penny Royal. 10. Take this herb and mix it with the stone found in the nest of the bird called a lapwing or black plover, and rub the belly of any beast and it shall be with birth, and have a young one, very black in the own kind. And if it be put to the nostrils, they shall fall to the ground anon as dead, but a little space after they shall be healed. 11. Also, if the aforesaid confection be put in a vessel of bees, the bees shall never fly away, but they shall gather together there. And if the bees be drowned and look as they were dead, if they be put in the aforesaid confection, they shall recover their life after a little time, as by the space of one hour, for it is proportionated to the quality lost. And for a sure proof, if drowned flies be put in warm ashes, they will recover life after a little space. Of Experiments of Power Over Dogs 7. The seventh herb is named of the Chaldees Algale, of the Greeks Aurum, of the Latins Lingua Carnis, of Englishmen Hound's Tongue. 12. Put thou this herb with the heart of a young frog and her matris, and put them where you wilt, and after a little time all the dogs of the whole town will be gathered together. And if thou shalt have the aforenamed herb under the foremost toe, all the dogs shall keep silence, and have no power also to bark. 13. If thou put the aforesaid thing in the neck of any dog, so that he may not touch it with his mouth, he shall be turned almost round about like a turning wheel until he fall onto the ground as dead, and this hath been proved in our time. 3 Strange Powers of Henbane 8. The eighth herb is named of the Chaldees Mansela, of the Greeks Ventosin, of the Latins Iosquianus, of the Englishmen Henbane. 14. Take thou this herb, and mix it cum regalis and hermodotalis. Put them in the meat of a mad dog, and he will die an one. 15. And if thou put the juice of it with the aforesaid thing in a silver cup, it shall be broken very small. 16. And if thou shalt mix the aforesaid thing with the blood of a young hare, and keep it in the skin of a hare, all the hairs will be gathered there until it be removed. Spontaneous Generation and Insomnia Produced 9. The ninth herb is named of the Chaldees Ango, of the Greeks Amala, of the Latins Lilium, of the Englishmen a lily. 17. If thou wilt gather this herb, ye son being in the sign of the lion, and mix it with the juice of the laurel or bay tree, and afterward then put that juice under the dung of cattle a certain time, it shall be turned into worms, of the which, if powder be made, and put about the neck of any man or in his clothes, he shall never sleep, nor be able to sleep until it be away. Many more things may be done with the virtue and juice of this aforesaid herb. Lily Spell for Inducing Fever and Loosing Milk 18. And if thou put the aforesaid thing under the dung of cattle, and anoint any man with the worms breeding thereof, he shall be brought anon unto a fever. 19. And if the aforesaid thing be put in any vessel where there is cow's milk, and be covered with the skin of any cow of one colour, all the kind shall lose their milk. 
Mistletoe spells. 10. The tenth herb is called of the Chaldees Luperi, of the Greeks Assisena, of the Latins Usicus Quercy, of Englishmen Mistletoe, and it groweth on trees, being holed through. To open all locks. 20. This herb, with a certain other herb, which is named Martigon, that is, Sylphian or Lazopitium, as it is written in the Almond's language, it openeth all locks. Other spells of the mistletoe. 21. And if the aforesaid things mixed together be put in the mouth of any man, that thinketh any thing, if it should happen, it is set on his heart, if not, it leapeth from his heart. If the aforesaid thing be hanged up to a tree with the wing of a swallow, there the birds shall gather together within the space of five miles. And this last was proved in my time. Of the marvellous power of the eleventh herb. 11. The eleventh herb is named of the Chaldees Hyphalon, of the Greeks Digilon, of the Latins Centaurus, of the Englishmen Centauri, which saith that this herb have a marvellous virtue. 22. For if it be joined with the blood of a female lapwing or black plover, and put with oil in a lamp, all they that compass it about shall believe themselves to be witches, so that his head is in heaven and his feet on the earth. And if the aforesaid thing be put in the fire when the stars shine, it shall appear that the stars run one against another and fight. And if the aforesaid plaster be put to the nostrils of any man, he shall fly away sharply through fear that he shall have, and this hath been proved. Spell to cause a man to lose his senses for fifteen days. 12. The twelfth herb is named of the Chaldees choleris, or Colericon, of the Greeks caramor, of the Latins commonly salvi, of the Englishmen sage. 23. This herb, being purified under dung of cattle, in a glazen vessel, bringeth forth a certain worm or bird, having a tail after the fashion of a bird, called a black mac or dufel, with whose blood, if any man be touched on the breast, he shall lose his sense or feeling the space of fifteen days and more. Causing a rainbow and thunder. 24. And if the aforesaid serpent be burned, and the ashes of it be put in the fire, anon there shall be a rainbow with a horrible thunder. Of the healing power of the thirteenth herb. 13. 25. The thirteenth herb is named of the Chaldees Olphantus, of the Greeks Hilirion, of the Latins Verbena, of the Englishmen Vervin. This herb, as witches say, gathered, the sun being in the sign of the ram, and put with grain or corn of piony of one year old, heals them that are sick of the falling sickness. Death Spell of the Verbena Worms 26. And if it be put in a safe ground, after eight weeks, worms shall be engendered, which, if they shall touch any man, he shall die anon. Attracting doves, colouring the sun, causing strife. 27. If the aforesaid thing be put in a dove or culver house, all the doves or culvers shall there gather together. And if the powder of them be put in the sun, it maketh the sun seem blue, if the powder be put in a place where men swell or lie between two lovers, anon there is made strife between them. Of the fourteenth magical herb. 
14. The fourteenth herb is named of the Chaldees Seleos, of the Greeks Cassini, of the Latins Melisophilus, of Englishmen Smallage, of the which herb Master Floridus maketh invention. Smallage producing worms and victory. 28. This herb, being gathered green and taken with the juice of the cypress tree, of one year put in gruel, maketh the gruel to appear full of worms, and maketh the bearer to be gentle and gracious, and to vanquish his adversaries. 29. And if the aforesaid herb be bound into an ox's neck, he will follow thee whithersoever thou wilt go. Of the fifteenth magical herb. 15. The fifteenth herb is named of the Chaldees Clarissa, of the Greeks Haphamus, of the Latins Rosa, of Englishmen a rose, and it is an herb whose flower is very well known. To make a tree sterile with the rose spell. 30. Take the grain or come of it, and the corn of mustard seed, and the foot of a weasel. Hang all these in a tree, and it will never bear fruit after. Other Spells of the Rose 31. And if the foresaid thing be put about a net, fishes will gather together there. And if Marguerite shall be dead and put in the aforesaid commixion half a day, it shall recover the life, although it be not forthwith yet gotten. And if the aforesaid powder be mixed with oil of the olive tree, and quick brimstone, and the house anointed with it, when the sun shineth it will seem all in a flame. Engendering Red and Green Serpents 16. 32. The sixteenth herb is called of the Chaldees Catalin, of the Greeks Pentaphylon, of the Latins Serpentina, in English snake's grass. This herb is well enough known with us. This herb put in the ground with the leaf called three-leaf grass engendereth red and green serpents, of which, if powder be made and put in a burning lamp, there shall appear abundance of serpents. And if it be put together under the head of any man, from thenceforth he shall not dream of himself. Of the manner of working and observances. 33. The manner of working all these aforenamed things, that the effect may be good in their planets, is in their houses and days, and great regard had to the observation of their due times. Of the virtues and uses of the herbs of the planets. 34. There be seven herbs that have great virtue after the mind of Alexander the Emperor, and these have their chief virtues of the influence of the planets. And therefore every one of them taketh their virtue from the higher natural power. 1. The Herb of Saturn 35. The first is the herb of the planet Saturnius, which is called Acidilius. Acidili, the juice of it, is good against the pain of the reins and legs. Let all them that suffer pain of the bladder eat it, the root of it being a little boiled. 36. Likewise, if men possessed with evil spirits, or made men bear it in a clean napkin, they be delivered from their disease, and it suffereth not a devil in the house. If children that breed their teeth bear it about them, they shall breed them without pain. 37. It is good that a man bear with him a root of it in the night, for he shall not fear, nor yet be hurt of other. 2. The Herb of the Sun The second is the Herb of the Sun, which is called Polygonia, or Corolligiola. This herb taketh name of the sun, 
for it engendered greatly, and so this herb worketh many ways. 38. Others call this herb Alcone, which is the house of the sun. This herb healeth the passions and griefs of the heart and stomach. He that toucheth this herb hath a virtue of his sign or planet. If any man drink the juice of it, it maketh him to do often the act of generation. And if any man bear the root thereof, it helpeth the grief of the eyes. And if he bear it with him before he have any grief, there shall come to him no grief of his eyes. It helpeth them also that be vexed with the frenzy, if they bear it with them in their breast. 39. It helpeth them also that are diseased with an imposture in the lungs, and maketh them to have a good breath, and it availeth also to the fire of melancholious blood. 3. The Herb of the Moon 40. The third is the herb of the moon, which is called Kynostates. The juice of it purgeth the pain of the stomach and breastplates, the vesture of it declareth that it is the herb of the moon. 41. The fruit of this herb purgeth great spleens and healeth them, because this herb increaseth and decreaseth as doth the moon. It is good against the sickness of the eyes, and maketh a sharp sight. It is good against the blood of the eyes. If thou put the root of it braid upon the eye, it will make the eye marvellous clear, because the light of the eyes, propinquitum mistum, is of the substance of the moon. It is also good to them that have an ill stomach, or which cannot digest their meats by drinking juice thereof. Moreover, it is good for them that have ye swine pox. 4. The Herb of Mars 42. The fourth herb is called Arnoglossa, plantain. The root of this herb is marvellous good against the pain in the head, because the sign of the ram is supposed to be the house of the planet Mars, which is the head of the whole world. It is good also against evil customs of a man's stones and rottenness or filthy biles, because his house is the sign Scorpio, and because a part of it holdeth sparma, that is the seed which cometh against the stones, whereof of all living things be engendered and formed. 43. Also the juice of it is good to them that be sick of the perilous flicks, with excoration or rasping of the bowels, continual torments, and some blood issuing forth, and more it purgeth them that do take a drink thereof, from the sickness of the fire of blood or emeralds, and of the disease of the stomach. 5. The Herb of Mercury the fifth is of the herb of the planet Mercurius, which is named Pentaphylon, in English Sankfoil, or the five-leaved herb, of others Pentadactyulius, of others Sepe Declinans, of certain Calspadola, or Cappadolo. 44. The root of this herb braid and made in a plaster healeth wounds and hardens. 45. Moreover, it putteth away quickly the disease called the swinepox, if the juice of it be drunken with water. It also healeth the passions or grapes of the breast, if the juice be drunken. It also putteth away the toothache. And if the juice of it be holden in the mouth, it healeth the griefs of the mouth. And if a man bear it with him, it will be to him a help. Obtaining the Favour of Princes 46. Moreover, if any man will ask anything of a king or prince, it giveth abundance of eloquence if he have it with him, and he shall obtain anything he desireth. 47. It is also good to have the juice of it for the grief of the stone, and the sickness which letteth a man that he cannot piss. 6. The Herb of Jupiter 
The sixth is the herb of the planet Jupiter, and it is named Acheron of certain Josquianus henbane. 48. The root of it put upon botches healeth them, and keepeth the place from inflammation of blood. If any man shall bear it before the grief come upon him, he shall never have botch. 49. The root of it also is profitable against the gout in the feet, when it is brayed and put upon the place that suffereth the pain or grief. And it worketh by virtue of those signs which have feet, and look upon the feet. And if the juice of it be drunken with honey, or with wine and honey sodden together, it is profitable against the griefs of the liver and all the passions thereof, because Jupiter ruleth the liver. 50. Likewise it is profitable to them that would do often the act of generation, and to them that desire to be loved of women if they bear it with them, for it maketh the bearers pleasant and delectable. 7. The Herb of Venus The seventh is the herb of the planet Venus, and is called Pisterion, of some Hyrobotane, id est Sturbo columbaria, et verbena, vervin. 51. The root of this herb put upon the neck healeth the swinepox, a posthumous behind the ears, and botches of the neck, and such as cannot keep their water. It healeth cuts also, and swelling of the evil, or fundament, proceeding of an inflammation which groweth in the fundament, and the amorods. 52. If the juice of it be drunk with honey and water sodden, it dissolveth those things which are about the lungs and lights. 53. It is also of great strength in venereal pastimes. If any man put it in his house or vineyard, or in the ground, he shall have great store of increase. Moreover, the root of it is good for all those which will plant vineyards or trees. If infants bear this herb, they shall be glad and joyous. The Gathering of the Plants 54. Yet this is to be marked, that these herbs be gathered from the three-and-twentieth day of the moon until the thirtieth day beginning the sign Mercurius by the space of a whole house. And in gathering make mention of the passion or grief, and the name of the thing for the which thou dost gather it, and the self-herb. Notwithstanding, lay the herb upon wheat or barley, and use it afterwards unto thy uses. This podcast is copyright 2018, the Idris Shah Foundation.